That's amazing that you felt so supported um, mm. on that topic. Post transition, when you you know when you were moving across into a different category, did you feel supported by the powerlifting community? How, how was your experience yeah. in general? Yeah, so in general, it was really positive. I um, so I started transitioning mid twenty sixteen. And I decided my coach, I had the same coach. So I'm coached by Luke Shakespeare and he was my coach since 2015. He got me to pro my last pro raw. I told him everything that I was planning to do. And he was just supportive in that. He was like, I'll just train you like always. And we'll just, you know, just have constant feedback and see how you go. So we decided to sort of take a little break to let the testosterone sort of work through my body. Um, like if it brought anything up physically that I might need to work through a rehab, like do that. But Obviously, there's like a real sensitivity, especially in the first six months of testosterone therapy, where yeah. you're moving from an estrogen dominant person into a testosterone dominant person. And that took me about eight months to get there. And, um, you know, just saturating my body with testosterone uh, and letting it sort of go through those changes, letting all the cellular changes happen and the hormonal changes happen and the mental changes happen. And, a, but yeah. I still like, we just sort of focused on doing like conditioning and things like that. And then we, I competed in October um, as a, I did a quick bench for a while. So, so <laughs> I somehow make use of the gains I was getting. <laughs> and I did, I did bench 40 kilos more than I had at pro raw, my last pro raw. Nice. <laughs> huge. With a huge. shell. Yeah. God. Yeah. I got a good taste of the, of the gains that were to come. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but um, overall my experience was good. My, when I enrolled in my first comp um, as a male, so all I did was I changed my membership at GPC to male um, and, uh, you know, I changed my weight class because I stacked on like 20 kilos in the first six months. Yep. yep. And then I just enrolled. I enrolled in a be- as bench only in a push-pull comp, uh, like a, what would you call it? Yeah, so GPC, like endorsed that comp. I don't know, it wasn't a novice comp. And like the guy, the coach who was running it called me and said, I actually don't know if I'm allowed to sort of let you do this. So I think I need to like put it through the Federation first. And I was kind of like, oh God, okay, sure. Like to me, it was like, there's really no difference. And, um, you know, and this is just where I'm going. Like I can't compete as female. Like that'd be crazy, right? Yeah. And um, you know, my whole identity changed, like within yeah, that, yeah. even the, just the first few moments of, of medical transition. And that uh, so for me, it was no a total win. shift. Mm. That would have been a no win for you anyway, because you would have had so much flack for for the whole situation. You know, advantageous transitioning, mm. da 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 da. Yeah. It would have just been a lose lose situation yeah. if you were to continue in the female. Category. Really. Yeah, that's totally. I wouldn't have been able to do it. I would have been like, it goes against everything for me to then have competed with the women. Yeah. Because it's just like, I'm, you know, it, it's just the category was totally inappropriate for me. Like, yeah. um, one, because it, it is not my identity. Yeah, Second, yeah. Um, I would clearly have an advantage. Like, I'm totally saturated with male hormones. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not going to walk into a female comp and just start sort of lifting yeah, against yeah. them, like, it doesn't make any sense, you know. That's an interesting. And so I was. Sorry, but I was just <laughs> going to say that that's a really interesting point, though, because I guess people would view that differently as well, wouldn't they? Mm. So that's your your ethical or your internal feelings led you mm. down that pathway. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see whether or not all transgender athletes in a similar situation would have made the same decision. Mm. Um, or whether or not they felt an ethical need to make that decision. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, like, I'm just going to speak in general terms for the community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> going through the kind of cognitive dissonance it takes to realise that you are actually of a gender that is completely different to how you were assigned at birth, yeah. how you were raised, what society expects of you, how everyone's already viewing you, like going through that, it changes you as a person and there's no way around that. And so I couldn't go against my own nature and compete with a female uh, in a female category just based off of that. It's not even my own ethics. 
Yeah. I mean, I know there are some trans athletes that are desperate to compete and they and desperate to compete in their own category, even if they don't meet the criteria. Yeah. And that's problematic. And that's why we have ethical gu- guidelines around that that people need to follow. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's it's like saying, like, oh, uh, Dakota, like you're registered in this horse race and you're running with all these horses. So just make it work, you know? <laughs> it really is. That is brilliant. It's just though. so unnatural, you know? Like, <laughs> I can run. All right. I can run. I've seen her. She can run. But that's actually, yeah. It's a nice way to put it. Though. Yeah. Cause, like, let's I don't know. It. It's just, it's just so foreign to think that that would be something that someone would do. Like, you wouldn't, um, it's not part of your sport to yeah. cheat or like take a competitive advantage that's so obvious um, and try and work your way. It's not a win. If you win, it's not a win, you know, like it just doesn't work. Yeah, um, I, so, yeah, yeah it, it's problematic, that's for sure. To go through um, that process. But that brings me to the story. Like my the guy was like, no, I don't know what to do. And yeah. I was like feeling pretty downtrodden about it. I was like, shit, like uh, I might not be able to compete as a male. This is like really devastating. Um, Cause you know, I was just in love with powerlifting. And then I actually got a call from the president of the fed, like 10 minutes later. And he said, you know, we're just a bunch of old guys. We don't know what we're doing. Um, <laughs> can we we're assign so you as our like diversity officer <laughs> and we'll get you, if you can just write up a set of guidelines for transgender people competing in powerlifting That's in our federation, cool. We'll just, we'll go by your guidelines. You know, you just let us that's, know what's right and we'll do that. Awesome. That's got to be and pretty much the best like, response. I was just like, like on my yeah. own lap, couldn't believe <laughs> what I was hearing. That's, that's an insanely that's incredible. great response. Yeah. Like, I guess they can't write them. They don't know. Well, and exactly the same as what Dak and I were saying at the start. Like, we're far from authorities on yeah. this topic because we've never experienced can, any of how it. How can you how set can the we, rules that yeah. you don't, aren't confident in? The, yeah. And you don't understand yeah. any of the other aspects. Like, when we first started talking about doing this, I was like, well, I can give an opinion on the hormonal side of things because mm. I've studied medical science and, yeah. and I understand a bit about the medical side of transitioning. Mm. But even then, the psychological components yeah. that weigh in, I could have no clue no on idea. whatsoever and what sort of toll that would take. Like, 